I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Obicast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. Given the wet conditions we experienced this autumn and winter, the level of fluke challenge on farms at the moment is quite high. I catch up with Dr Orla Keane to discuss this in a bit more detail. Orla discusses the various treatment options that are available and their suitability for a number of different circumstances and highlights the risk of continual use of products from an individual active ingredient from a resistance perspective and goes on to highlight the best practice when dosing. We start off, however, with Orla discussing the best means of diagnosis and the importance of using previous farm history when considering treatment. The Department of Agriculture produce a fluke forecast in the autumn every year and the fluke forecast that was produced uh, just at the end of last year, um, it, it, it predicted that the risk of fluke was quite high throughout the country, all over the country, due to the weather conditions that, that were there throughout the summer and the autumn. So this means if you have a previous history of fluke on your farm, it's really, really important that you look at treating for fluke um, this winter. The other really useful source of information is liver reports from the factory. So um, as uh, animals are sent to the factory, the livers will be examined and, and um, evidence if there's evidence of fluke uh, damage, if that is fed back, that will also give you an indication of whether fluke are an issue on your farm at the moment. And there's also other diagnostics out there for example, the use of fecal egg counts where we look for fluke eggs in, in dung samples. The thing to remember about the fecal egg counts is that from um, the time that a fluke is, is taken in, that's eaten from grass to the time that you see eggs in the dung is about 10 to 12 weeks. So really what you're looking at with an egg count is the infection they picked up almost three months ago. So that is just something to be aware about when using egg counts, because if the fluke are still in the early immature or the immature phase, they won't be laying eggs, but they may still be causing damage. And that's one of the reasons why um, the liver reports from the factory can be so useful. The faecal egg count setting has limitations, particularly even given previous treatments. I suppose the reality is there is an option there for a lot of flocks at the moment. They've scanned the use, many will take the choice of sending the empties to the factory. So it'll be important to follow that up and actually check is there any evidence of liver damage? Yes, absolutely. If, if there are colios going to the going to the factory, they're um, a great way of getting information on the status of the liver in, in animals on the flock. Just mentioned colios going to the factory, often there'll be some store lambs maybe remaining going to the factory too. Perhaps one overlooked animal on the farm or category is the lambs that remain, particularly the replacement new lambs that in many cases have been grazed outdoors. They're still at risk from fluke, and it's not they're not a species to, or not a category to be overlooked either. No, no, um, they're not. So really, grazing animals pick up fluke generally from kind of the the late summer to early autumn on. So if you have replacement yo lambs on the farm, they are at risk of fluke, and they should be considered in any treatment plan. So yeah, basically that categorizes in with the use the same in treatment. Just in terms of you know, the choice of product, and this is often what it comes back to, um, maybe just to refresh the listeners on it, Orla, like there is a big difference out there in the efficacy of different products at different stages for flu control. What are we targeting Absolutely. at the moment? Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of different um, products on the market, but there's a, there's a number of different chemical classes and the chemical classes kill flukes of different ages. So there's only one chemical class and that's triclobendazole, which kills all the way down to the early immature fluke. Um, now, the issue with triclobendazole is that because it's been so widely used in the past, we know there is resistance in Ireland. Then some of the other products, the likes of your clozantyl, nitroxanol, rifoxanide based products, those products will kill immature fluke. So they'll kill fluke from about six or seven weeks of age, but they won't kill a uh, fluke younger than that. And then you've other products um, like your oxyclozanide, albendazole, um, that will kill mature fluke. So they will only kill the adult fluke. They won't kill the early immature, the mature. So it's really important that when you choose a product, uh, you choose a product that will kill the ages that you're um, interested in and bearing in mind the fact that there is triclobendazole resistance out there. So, for example, um, you know, in, a, in a, a situation where animals have been housed for a period of time 
and the fluke have developed to the immature stage, products like clozantyl, nitroxanol, rifoxanide uh, would, be, would be good products to use. I suppose uh, the practical limitation all of there is like in the ideal world, you know, if sheep were housed nearly the summer, which they were due to the weather conditions of many farms, they're in for a period of four, five, six weeks. Your choice of product is very straightforward and logical at that stage because a lot of them will work effectively and they haven't picked up a board in that house period. But there are still sheep outdoors or recently housed, ones that will be grazed right out up until the point of lambing. The need is, there's still a need to treat them, but yeah. the control option may be slightly different. Yeah, so I think in those cases, you're probably looking at something like triclobentazole if you don't have resistance. The other products um, it can also be useful at this point because the severity of fluke infection is dependent on the number of fluke that are present. So even by using one of these products that kills fluke from kind of six, seven weeks on, by doing that, while you may not be completely eliminating the fluke, you're reducing the fluke burden and that in and of itself will be of, will be of benefit. So these products are still useful, even if they don't kill all of the flu. I suppose the other consideration there is we don't want to get too close to them for handling and other reasons either before we treat them. But just something else comes to my mind, like the choice of product that was used previously prior to topping or maybe immediately after mating also comes into it. The whole idea all of rotating products and the potential for delaying resistance in flucicides is something that we need to consider as well. How does that fit into a control programme? Yes, yeah, so I think it is a good idea to rotate the products that you're using. So the more we use a product, the more likely it is that resistance will develop. Therefore, when there is a choice of products out there, it's a good idea to rotate uh, the different products that you use. And it's really important that what you rotate is the active ingredient of the product rather than just the brand name. You know, some some um, there may be products on the market that contain the same active ingredient. So when you rotate, you need to make sure you're rotating to a different product. So um, when you're rotating again, you want to think about the stage of fluke that you're targeting. So probably rotate to a product to a product that kills fluke of a similar um, of a similar age. So you know something like clozantal um, that that kills fluke down down to immature stage then if you, you might want to switch that to something like nitroxanol, which will kill fluke of a similar age. So it would be important not to use the same product over and over again. I suppose one thing to bear in mind is that clozantyl and rifoxanide are chemically similar. So rotating from, from uh, one product to the other may not be, um, you know, it's, it's not really a true rotation. And then the other thing to bear in mind about this is the fact that um, when you're targeting fluke, it's a good idea to use a flucicide and a flucicide only. And um, there are products on the market that contain both a flucicide and a wormer. And it's um, these products, you know, that, that that means you're unnecessarily using a wormer when maybe you don't need to. And that will select for resistance in the worms. So I'd say use a flucicide only product. Keep a record of what you've used in previous years. So you know what you used in previous years. And if you want to rotate the product and change the product the following year, you can do that. Just to clarify, like in all cases here, we're talking about active ingredient. It's easily found on the back of the products, and we have a quick record guide up on the Chagas website. I'll include that link in the description as well. Um, yes, but absolutely. It, again, like avoiding the combination of using a warmer on yules that don't need it this time of year is another key thing we need to get in, and that's for a warmer resistance point of view. Another aspect of that, and is equally applicable to flucosides, is ensuring that we're actually given the correct amount of dose. And perhaps more so all because there could be a bigger variation in weight range in yules, but the toxicity limit tends to be slightly lower in flucosides as well. So getting the right amount in is another vital step, isn't it? Absolutely. So, you know, underdosing runs the risk of not killing the fluke and selecting for resistance, while overdosing runs the risk of toxicity issues. So it's really important that the correct amount is, is delivered, and that will be dependent on the weight of the animal. So it's really important that animals are weighed, or at least a selection of, of a few of the larger animals are weighed to give it an indication of the weights. And if you've got large variation in weight range, um, potentially split them into kind of larger and smaller groups and um, that the cal that the gun is calibrated and that the correct amounts is delivered. And just like the one other thing with flucosides, they all tend to have a long withdrawal. It's something to be cognizant of, but I think as something you mentioned there previously, keeping track of the products we use from year to year, that you can have a plan for rotating is, is something we kind of need to 
maybe put in place more in farms? Yeah, so I think, you know, it serves a few purposes and, and um, it's really good in terms of keeping a record of what was used in the past so that if you want to change up the project product that you were using, you can do that. And also, if any of these products become effect, ineffective, you know, you may notice differences as well. Now, unfortunately, by the time you notice differences, um, you, it, it, it could be it could be quite late, but it is a good idea to keep a record of the products used so you can kind of um, get some indication of efficacy. And also, if you want to change products, you know what you used in the past so you can change it up the next time you're treating. It's all informed about our um, control plan on the farm. So, well, Orla, thanks very much for your time today. Good catching up with you again. Yeah, you're welcome, Kieran. Thank you. OK, we're going to have to wrap things up at this point. Again, as Orla highlighted, Fluke is a challenge on farms at the moment. We've experienced a particularly wet autumn and winter. The burden out there is likely to be higher. She did outline the various control options depending on your circumstance. I have included a link to a publication that was produced in 2018 that gives a breakdown of the different, um, most of our commonly used products and what active ingredient category they fall into to make it a bit simpler when choosing it. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for any updates on Sheep Program, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chocolate Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and you can listen in to any of our episodes.